So guys, I did it. At long last, I finally found the fun in South America. In Kaiserreich, there is a very unlikely nation that actually contains really good content. At the southern tip of the continent exists the Patagonian Workers' Front, a syndicalist rebellion that really has nothing going for it. There is no industry, barely any resources, the bare minimum of technology, and so few people it looks like the current Halo Infinite player base. From this wasteland in the south, I will build up the strength to challenge those who seek to stop my dream of uniting South America. And it doesn't matter if they are next to me or abroad, I will eliminate anyone who stands in my way. So strap in y'all, we're going to be building a superpower from scratch here. So their focus tree is split into two parts. The first part on the left is dedicated to helping us win our first fight to take over Argentina, and when we win, the right tree unlocks allowing us to do the fun path. Things weren't all bad for us since we weren't by ourselves here. Russian communists who survived the civil war were here to share their brilliance to guide our military, like Zhukov and Stalin. They gathered up the Patagonian leaders to give them a plan. So considering the harsh terrain and the lack of infrastructure in this region, it would be best for you to construct- No! What you actually need are good tanks to punch through your enemy- Joseph, enough about the tanks. They can't even afford them. Why are you always talking about tanks recently? Well, I've been playing a lot of this game called World of Tanks since they were so kind to sponsor this video. I mean, on my computer, I can play a game where I control a tank and fight against real people across the world over 40 different maps for free. There are so many different tanks I could play. Like imagine 800 different tanks of varying sizes, including tank variants like tank destroyers and self-propelled artillery from nations all over the world playable in this game. This is a world where we won the Civil War Georgie. They have great detailed designs for what our glorious socialist country's tanks would have looked like and the rest of the world's tanks look fine too, I guess. Just give it a try. If you scroll down, you can click on the first link in the description to download the game, and when you're registering your new account, use the promo code COMBAT to get a week of premium access, 250,000 credits, the premium tank Cromwell B permanently, along with three rental tanks, the Tiger 131, T-78, and Type 64 for 10 battles each. Alright, time to actually start playing. So we get to sit back and laugh at the capitalist country suffering from Black Monday while we are completely unaffected. We can't have a recession since our economy is already at rock bottom. An opportunity came to us to prison break a general who turned against the Argentine government. Stalin came up with a great plan to sneak a special covert force towards the prison. The garrison there wasn't ready for us so we easily busted the general and his men out giving us some much needed army XP to spend on the army spirit for weekly manpower. I tried to ask the native people for help in the revolution in exchange for nothing but for some reason they said no. I guess the reactionaries had already broken their desire for freedom, it's very sad, but many such cases. At least our comrades in Chile were much more helpful, giving us guns. Britain and France also gave us guns, allowing us to expand our militia. To prepare against Argentina, we also began sending covert teams on missions, but despite our best efforts to infiltrate the country, our teams kept getting caught. I failed three times in a row and by that point I just mentally gave up on any espionage. Argentina prepares for their invasion and to troll me the game finally has one of my infiltrations succeed when I can't do anything to take advantage of it. Marc Agé was going to be the main man in charge of our troops and easily handled the first wave of Argentinian attacks. Our men were ready for this fight because if we failed they knew what our future would look like. Fortunately, our enemy was pretty dumb. I managed to snake through their lands and surround an infantry division, but this great news was interrupted by the news that the leftists are infighting once again. When it came to decide who's at fault, I just followed the leftist handbook and blamed the anarchists for everything going wrong. Fortunately, me and our Chilean comrades have great synergy going on and we encircle a bunch of Argentinians in the southwest. With so many units cut off, their country was completely open for me to push forward to encircle more units. When we were liberating Buenos Aires, it was obvious to the smart Argentinians that it was time to bail. They joined my military and since the reactionary military was destroyed, we sent men across the remaining cities to tell the people about their liberation. 
But despite us doing all this work to liberate everyone, certain people would need some more convincing. The next part of the focus tree was open to me now, and we could finally stop pretending we liked the Chileans. It was time to get the Totalists in power, and it was pretty straightforward to get them there. If the option gives more power to the federal government, then it's good, and keep doing that till we're completely in power. Once Gioldi was announced as the new chairman, it seemed like smooth sailing, but once again, the anarchists were acting up and trying to overthrow the government. Chairman Gioldi tries to calm people down and preach unity, but it's not working. General Justo rose to the occasion. He got the loyal men around the capital and secured the armory. The anarchists were forced back, but not before they could blow up a bunch of factories. We heard a radio call from men trapped in the Casa Rosada that they were in desperate need of support. So Justo chose to target the artillery the anarchists were using against us. And we used that captured artillery to target the remaining rebel groups in the city. We saved the capital, but it came at a great cost. At the cost of great comrade Stalin's life. Chairman Gioldi had proven that he could not be trusted to run this country, so with a vote of no confidence, General Justo had proven himself as the new chairman. With all internal threats gone, it was time to focus on building up this country to work towards the final goal. You see, there was an idea called the Andesia Initiative. Justo knows this. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable nations, see if they could become something more, see if they could work together when the workers needed them to, to fight the battles they never could. Stalin died believing in the idea, in unity, but Argentina still needed people to accomplish that mission, so we tried to attract socialist immigrants. Despite our government looking like it's on the verge of collapse, we could still trick a lot of stupid Europeans into moving here. The first target of the Andesia initiative was Chile. Those liberals were primed to turn against the revolution at any second it was convenient for them, so we had to strike first. I kind of sympathize with the commander who's in charge of defending a nation that looks like this though. It'd be like watching Australia versus Argentina in the World Cup. Everybody knows what's going to happen, and you feel bad for the guys who have to go through it. But Chile was a good warm-up for our army, so I figured I'd go for the next easy target in the area, Uruguay. It was supposed to be a quick one-week invasion, but when the war started, I was shocked to see Brazil had joined. Never checked to see that apparently, Brazil had been guaranteeing Uruguay's independence. The Brazilian government started flooding the country with troops, and my hope of a quick victory was dead. In engineering, the boys had whipped up a new tank to fulfill Comrade Stalin's vision in his memory. Yeah, it wasn't great, but it was a start. The war had turned into a stalemate, so I had to think of something to break it. I researched how to do naval landings and prepared an army to overwhelm the Uruguayan capital. The landing went off really well, better than I expected since the country just capitulated, leaving the Brazilians in a very exposed position. With initiative on our side, we rushed forward, cutting off many Brazilian divisions. And once they all surrendered, we saw that the Brazilians had lost 400,000 men. But the Brazilians aren't going to give up, so we had to keep pushing north to force a surrender. I then saw news that Huey Long had apparently been cooed by the American Legion. So now the United States was controlled by the gamer-in-chief, William Pelly. After closing another large pocket, Ajé was wounded, but let's take time to appreciate how far he has come in learning war. This guy is on pace to be a god-tier general. If only he was there in Europe to lead the Third International, because they are struggling against Germany. Once he recovered, another offensive began in Brazil, and we took Sao Paulo. The casualty ratio looks good for us right now, but then you look at my manpower situation and realize I'm hurting too. I can't even raise my recruitment law because for some reason, people don't like what I'm doing in the country. Chile won't help me out with garrisons since they don't have manpower either, so I gotta try to be as aggressive as possible to end this war. Fortunately, a wider front with fewer Brazilians to deal with made that very easy for me. I have to delete any units that are on the front because I needed every man available to get victory. I honestly don't even know why I played this war out. Brazil isn't even required to form Andesia, and the initiative was delayed by nearly two years to cap this dumb country. But they weren't the only idiots to surrender. 
France had failed to fight for the revolution, so this world was looking pretty doomed with a fascist America and a triumphant monarchist Germany. When I released Brazil as a puppet, it felt good to finally have some manpower again. I could use those men to put into our new tank divisions, which had a lot of pot- Okay, please, don't, don't laugh at my template, alright? It's just a start. With that war over, I could bait more people to immigrate here and get back to the whole point of this campaign. I invaded Paraguay since they were pretty busy fighting their war with Peru, but when I capped them, I had no points to actually take the country since Peru fought them for so long. It's whatever. I was gonna invade Peru anyways. So I put Auger in charge of the Mountaineer Army for the Andes push, and he's just so good. Over 500 soft attack on a mountain. With stats and traits like this, the whole world is just his playground. And unsurprisingly, against a general like this, Peru didn't last long. Next up was Colombia, which was allied to Venezuela, and both these nations were at war with the Entente. Our tank divisions got their first taste of combat, and their battlefield performance was, well... They existed! The Colombians, I guess, were worn out against the Entente since they barely fought me, and in the final peace deal, I was only able to get one of the nations I needed since Canada took over Venezuela, putting the Entente next on my hit list. I got my ports garrisoned because I know they love naval invasions and got to work. I did design a new tank for this war though, one that was actually pretty good. But the problem for me wasn't pushing the Entente out of South America, because they barely defended the land here. It was more about how was I supposed to get the Entente to accept that this was my rightful land. Canada was the first big problem, like, how am I supposed to deal with a nation like that? I didn't want them to get stalled out in the country though, so I planned my own naval invasion of Canada. Using all the fleets I grabbed from the other South American countries, I had just enough naval supremacy from these to launch my naval invasion when the Canadians completely removed their fleet. So how did that invasion go? Fortunately, hope was not yet lost because the port of Halifax was nearby and seemingly a lot less guarded. I sent more tank divisions to invade, and the sole Portuguese division there did not stand a chance. Our tanks, reinforced with Auger's mountaineers, pushed to put more pressure on the Canadians. And despite being fascist, we were able to work with the American army to deal the final blows to make Canada capitulate. And when I saw the peace deal screen, I thought I may be done, only to be very disappointed. I got the Caribbean out of it at least, but now I had to go down the list killing the Entaut Majors. The Canadian government fled to the newly re-established United Kingdom, and that was my next target. I had to slowly make my way over there, first invading Bermuda, then going to the Azores before finally getting the naval range to support an invasion of Ireland. It's great that now my tanks are pretty modernized, they can actually do these really risky naval invasions easily. It looks like the Entente tried to send some divisions to help the Irish out towards the end, but that wasn't going to do anything for them. I started preparing my invasion of the UK and came to the realization that I could actually up my conscription law. Finally, I wasn't reliant on the trickle of manpower from the army spirit. Since the illegitimate state of the United Kingdom was still very new, there wasn't much they had to resist my tanks either. For tank crews, it was basically a peaceful drive through the British countryside, occasionally interrupted with blowing up British people. Another peace deal happened where I could freely annex Venezuela, Ireland, and the UK, but I still can't form Andesia because I'm not at peace. Reactionary France was next on the list, and they had been returned from exile to the mainland, but fortunately our French comrades were going to be liberated soon as well. There was no opposition to our landing in the north, so it was obvious the people here are welcoming us. As we liberated France, I kind of wonder what the Germans were thinking seeing all this happen. They went through all this effort to defeat the communes in Europe, and after years of fighting, costing millions of men, they are just back again because of some far-off militia in South America. The Entente couldn't even establish a defensive line for Spain in the Pyrenees Mountains, dooming any hope of Iberia resisting communism as well. With the surrender of the last Portuguese holdouts around Lisbon, it was time to finish the reactionary French for good in North Africa. 
An invasion was prepared to hit important ports along the Algerian coast, and when it launched, we hit a fat brick wall. They were ready for any type of invasion from the Mediterranean, and I needed to figure out a different angle for my approach. Y'all heard of Around the Majno? Well, I'm gonna do Around the Sahara since the ports in West Africa have barely anything around it. The French tried to send a massive force, but when you have good tanks, the AI can't do anything to stop you, really. This whole scenario is crazy. The year is 1945, the French army makes a last stand in their North African colonies. Wave after wave of Argentinian tanks emerge from the Saharan desert to attack them. All this because they would not let South America unify. With the fall of Algiers, France is finally ready to tap out, and fortunately, I don't have to deal with India because they saw where the winds were blowing and surrendered to the Japanese. The war was finally over, and all I had to do now was reintegrate my puppets, and I could finally form Andesia. So much was spent to get to this point, only for a lot of people to really hate me for it. There was a new focus tree unlocked to deal with the initial issues of the country and to further map paint in North America, but after dealing with the Entente, I can't say I have any interest in trying to fight the US. So I'm just gonna call it there. If you like this campaign, feel free to give the video a like so others may see it too, and subscribe if you haven't so you can see my future stuff. Also, thank you to World of Tanks for sponsoring this video. Remember, you can check out the game by clicking the first link in the description and use the code COMBAT when creating your account to get these nice goodies. Have a great rest of your day and see you next time with something a bit different.